Steve, when you think about the laws of nature, laws of physics, how do you characterize them or categorize them? That's a great discovery that nature is uh, governed by laws. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, wasn't apparent for a long time. It you know, used to be thought that uh, everything had to be explained uh, by the intervention of some nymph or <laughs> god or something. And in, in fact, uh, the idea of laws of nature was, was rejected by uh, a Muslim philosopher, Al-Ghazali, in the 13th century <laughs> on the ground that the very concept put God in chains, uh, you know, that things <laughs> happen not because there are laws of nature, but because God wants them to happen that way. And they gave, for example, the idea of uh, burning a piece of cotton. The cotton burns not, turns black not because of the fire, but because God wants it to turn black. Of course, that attitude makes science difficult. Um, <laughs> We have uh, all kinds of laws, and uh, the engineering student learns various laws of Ohm's law, and uh, which tells you how current and resistance and voltage are related in an electric circuit, and so on. Many of these laws are uh, uh, derived from deeper laws. In fact, uh, uh, that's true of most of the laws we learn as as students, and. Uh, uh, some of them are, are purely empirical. We don't know why they work, uh, but most of the ones that have been well tested have then been understood on the basis of, of deeper laws. I mean, for example, Ohm's law, we understand on the basis of a theory of electricity and magnetism, together with certain assumptions about the way electric currents move in, in solids. Uh, we keep peeling away deeper laws and deeper laws, uh, the, the most useful laws are not necessarily the deepest ones. An electrician doesn't need to know about uh, why Ohm's law is true. Uh, and in fact, for many purposes, the laws of nature that we have now are perfectly adequate. Uh, for example, I think it's very unlikely that any future discovery in uh, physics will have any implications at all for biology, because the laws of chemistry and biology and the laws of chemistry and, and physics uh, that we have are adequate now uh, insofar as they, as insofar as we can understand biology, the, the lack of understanding is not because of, of any failure of understanding the laws. And we know why chemistry works the way it does in terms of the laws of physics, uh, at least in the sense that they're there are no future discoveries in physics that will improve our understanding of chemistry. Uh, but we desperately want to know why things are the way they are, and we want to peel away and, and understand why the laws that we have now uh, are the way they are. The deepest laws that we have at present, the laws that from which all other laws can be deduced insofar as they can be deduced from anything, are the 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 laws of the standard model, a set of equations governing quantum fields which manifest themselves as various particles, electrons and quarks and photons. And the next big step is to say, why is the standard model the way it is? That's not a final law. What is underneath that? We don't know. You've talked about beauty and elegance in describing physics and the physical world. Uh, tell me what you mean by that. I'm not too sure what I mean by elegance. Uh, elegance is usually used as a term of approval of uh, intellectual uh, athleticism. You know, <laughs> someone is, does something very elegantly if he, do, if he or she does it with a minimum of mathematical effort. Or, uh, uh, beauty, uh, I think, is, is a more serious, uh, quality. Uh, we, we, or at least I, think of a theory as being beautiful if you can see that it is the way it is, that it hasn't been jiggered to work out to fit the data. None of our theories is entirely beautiful in that sense. They all have certain arbitrary features, but the more rigid they are, the, the more they are based on a simple principle without any fine tuning with the way they f the more they flow from a simple assumption 
and and, and the yet, richness they produce. Uh, yes, and yet produce and yet encompass a tremendous variety of phenomena, the more beautiful they are. Einstein's general theory of relativity is very beautiful because it, um, it describes all the phenomena associated with gravity in terms of um, a simple assumption about the equivalence of gravitation with inertia uh, and uh, it, it, it plus a little bit of extra assumption, uh, which Einstein didn't actually recognize adequately, uh, that the equations shouldn't be too complicated in their form. Uh, he rejected certain complications he could have included mm -hmm. in the equations somewhat arbitrarily. We understand now b better than he did why those equations have to take the simple form he assumed. Um, but it's a very beautiful theory. It's, in, in some ways, it's an archetype of a beautiful theory. Uh, quantum electrodynamics is another beautiful theory. It's the theory of electrons and photons. And again, with certain assumptions about the equations not being too complicated, it, it can't be, you can't fool around with it. It is the way it is. It makes predictions which are accurate to nine decimal places, wow. fantastically accurate assumptions. But today we understand quantum electrodynamics on the basis of a deeper theory, the modern standard model of elementary particles, uh, which is, describes a much richer variety of phenomena, in a way is less beautiful, but much more comprehensive, <laughs> and has quantum electrodynamics as a consequence.